Hey guys, I'm Charles Neal. You know, I'm pretty much a traditional carver, you know, rosettes and fans and period furniture type stuff. But I gotta tell you, I love chip carving. And I've done a little bit. But I thought you would probably enjoy seeing a professional do it. This is Jeff Fleischer, good friend of mine. Now Jeff is one of the best chip carvers I've ever seen in my life. Here's a set of bellows he carved. And you can see this is what you typically think of when you think about chip carving. But that's definitely not the only place it comes into play. Just like this table Jeff made. Where he's used his chip carving to accent his rails here, just beautiful. So I asked Jeff to come in and show us a little bit of basics on it. Now Jeff teaches chip carving at North Bennett in Boston, and you teach some at the Woodcraft up in Leesburg, Virginia, right? Right, right. Now not only that, but Jeff has his own little book he's written and a kit to help you get started. Now you took these and made them where they could, to lay them out, they could just take ink and... Right, there's rubber stamps, and you'll, I'll show you in a minute that there are some basic designs you use to get started in chip carving. And in order to uh, put that design on the wood quickly so you can practice carving, I made some rubber stamps. Excellent. So what I'm gonna do at this moment, guys, is I'm gonna bail out and I'm gonna let Jeff teach you some basics about chip cards. Thanks, uh, Charles. What I thought I'd try to do today is give you a little overview of what chip carving is and the style and how easy it is to get started uh, with chip carving. Uh, Charles talked a little bit about uh, the uses of chip carving, and chip carving is a very decorative form of carving, uh, but you need something to carve onto. Unlike carving in the round or relief carving, where that is the product. With chip carving, you want to decorate something. In this case, a bellows. So here's a design on a bellows, and it was used to decorate the surface of the bellows using both sort of a geometric pattern as well as sort of an organic pattern of these ferns around the outside. What I also wanted to try to do is uh, apply chip carving to furniture. And so that's an example of the table here that Charles mentioned. Trying to use chip carving to accent the rails on the, on the, the table and give it that little extra special little touch. Uh, so uh, you can use chip carving to decorate things and it can be either very geometric at one end or very organic and flowing freeform at the other end. And that's what you have here on the rails, very flowing freeform type of chip carving. But to get started with chip carving, uh, there's some very basic tools that you need. Basically, a knife, and there's, uh, uh, this is called a cutting knife, and we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, in a minute. And 99% of, of what you see in chip carving is done with this particular knife. Uh, a set of uh, sharpening stones, in this case, most chip carvers use ceramic uh, sharpening stones uh, that are used to sharpen the blade and then some drawing tools. And you can get ideas and, and put your designs on wood either by drawing them on with a compass, pencil, ruler, or by transferring designs that you may have, have on a piece of paper to the wood. And there's a number of different methods for transferring a design to a piece of wood. Okay, so what I wanted to try to do first here is talk about uh, the knife and this preparation for chip carving and then some very basic designs that we'll uh, talk about and then I'll demonstrate, if, uh, demonstrate to, to carve. So a chip carving knife, as I mentioned, this knife is used for 99% of the, of the cuts in chip carving. Uh, has a unique style uh, blade. Uh, unlike most carving knives where they come out straight out of the handle, chip carving knife is angled downward so that the tip, which is used mainly for carving, uh, is presented to the wood and can be inserted into the wood uh, readily. Uh, it also has a sharp uh, tip, 
that, that uh, is used to incise into the wood. And in this case, on a hock blade, uh, squared off back, which helps reduce the amount of chatter or the rubbing of the back of the blade on the chip as you're, as you're carving, especially in uh, curved cuts. I mentioned uh, ceramic uh, sharpening stones. Chip carving knives are sharpened at a 15 degree angle so that when you present the, uh, the uh, blade to the stone, you lift up the back of the blade and it's about a thickness of a dime will give you about a 15 degree angle. So the bevel on a chip carving knife is very shallow and that's especially important because you're sticking it in the wood and pulling it through the wood. So you're trying to get as little resistance as you can. Uh, so chip carving knives have a very sh shallow bevel. So you get that by raising it about 15 degrees, sharpening it back and forth, much like you would sharpen any blade. The only difference is, is the shallow angle. And uh, most chip carvers will use these types of ceramic stones because they do fit in your hand, very easy to, to, to just freshen up a blade periodically. In terms of the actual designs, you can, we normally start out with a very simple design, a uh, very simple uh, shape to cut out, which are three-sided triangles. So you normally will, will draw a grid on, a, on the board. Uh, this particular grid is spaced so that there's two millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters, two millimeters, and we're gonna demonstrate carving some simple triangles out of that. Once you can start to carve triangles, then you can start to change the shape of that triangle and you can draw, a, for example, a rosette and you can get into these shapes here, which are still triangles. For example, this one right here is still a triangle, but it's got a slight curve to it. It's a little bit bigger. And by combining these different shapes, you can get some very nice patterns that you can carve out. After rosettes, then you can get into free form shapes that we showed you on the, uh, for example, on, on the table. So you can draw these by hand. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, give a little demonstration on how do you draw, uh, for example, this rosette. Okay, what I'd like to do is show you how to draw some of these basic designs, and then we'll we'll demonstrate I'll demonstrate carving out a couple of the chips. In this case here, we've uh, uh, just straight lines, as I mentioned, uh, on a spacing of two millimeters, four millimeters, four millimeters, and two millimeters. And it's pretty obvious how you would draw that with a uh, ruler and a pencil. Maybe what's a little less obvious is drawing this rosette. This is a 12-sided rosette where uh, if you count the number of uh, uh, tips here of the petals, there's 12 of them. So I thought I'd do is just demonstrate uh, how to draw that, and then, uh, in fact, even show you an easier way after, after I get done. So let me uh, move up to the clear area. Have a compass, and we're going to start drawing a circle. And take the compass point over to the edge of the circle and draw arcs around the circle. And we just sort of walk our way around using the intersection of the arc and the circle for the next drawing. And at this particular compass setting, if you do that and you work your way all the way around the circle, you end up with six petals. Okay, now if I do the same thing by, again by starting in the center between two of those, we'll get another six, which will give us our 12-sided rosette. We can sort of work our way around. Now you don't uh, have to be an engineer to do this. Uh, this is pretty, as you can see, pretty straightforward. You really want to get into some really interesting designs. There are books that you can get that describe drawing anywhere from three-sided rosettes all the way up to 12-sided uh, rosettes. Now we have this sort of 
area in the center that we can really sort of highlight and, and separate. And you can really uh, does, you can really make changes to these, and, and uh, so we change the size of the circle we're going to draw, and we'll draw the center part. Okay, so there's a there's a twelve sided rosette, and what we're going to do is uh, you can actually now carve this rosette in a number of different ways as well. You could carve the center petals here like that. We can skip these and carve this area here. Or you can do the complete reverse if you wanted. Instead of carving those, you can carve th this area. And then this area. And what that does is it gives you two completely different looking designs off the same rosette. Now, from a beginner's perspective, you should draw these rosettes and carve it, draw it again, carve it, draw it again, carve it to improve your skill. You can see that that took a minute or two to draw. Uh, I actually, Charles mentioned earlier, I uh, have a kit that I put together for beginner chip carvers which uses rubber stamps. So I can actually use this rubber stamp to stamp out that design. So let me just do that quickly just to give you a feel for, for doing that. So I have the rubber stamp, I have an ink pad, put some ink on it, and stamp it out, which obviously is a lot easier than trying to draw it by hand. And for beginners, they really like this because it really gives you a quick way to get your designs on the wood so you're practicing carving, not necessarily practicing drawing. So let's take this design and do some carving on it. So that, uh, what I, Okay, so now we have their, our rosette. And I thought I'd do is demonstrate just a few cuts, the basic uh, cuts that we're going to do on this rosette. So here's an area here that I mentioned before. We can carve these petals out and these areas in here. So let's do that. And one of the things in chip carving, a lot of little subtle rules in chip carving. One of them is you want to do the largest chips first. So these are the largest chips. So we'll do these before we do those. So you take your knife, holding it, these three fingers curled around the knife and your thumb so that your thumb, the knife blade, and your uh, index finger sort of form like a little tripod on the wood. So you have a very stable uh, setting on the wood. And uh, if you keep your thumb against the blade, it, you can't cut yourself, which is very important in chip carving. You don't want to have any red spots on your wood. So you insert the tip of the knife into the wood at the top of the chip, pull it along, tracing that line, and you sort of visualize that the tip of that knife is now in the center of the chip. So the tip of the knife is basically right about there. Take it out, we rotate the board. Normally we do this sitting in, uh, having the board sitting in your lap, but for the videotaping here we'll uh, do it on the, on the bench. Now you're doing is doing the same thing coming along the bottom line. Again, the tip of the knife is at that center of the chip. And then do the uh, last side. So you go in for your depth so that all three chips meet at the bottom. And you come back, pull the knife out as you come along, and out comes that chip. Just like that. Okay. So let's do one more. We'll do another one like that. Start at the top of the chip, go along the line, pushing it in for your depth. Come along the baseline. And out. And you get another chip. So you want all three sides to meet in that angle that you're holding the knife at is a 65 degree angle, so all the chips meet, all the cuts meet at the bottom of that chip. 
These are just two-sided chips instead of a three-sided chip. So let me just demonstrate that. You just start at one top, come in along the line, and pull out. So you're just scraping the surface in the center because you have all these lines coming in there. You don't want to undercut and have the pattern break out. Do one, turn it around, and come in and do the other side. Okay. Now you can carry this all the way around if you wanted to. Instead of doing that, let me just demonstrate the other design that I mentioned where you could actually take out this area and this area and then one of these because this is an interesting shape. So for the centers here, what we'll do is we'll start in the center. Come around pushing the knife in as I go so that again the tip of that knife is now located in the center of that chip which is right about there. Rotate the board. Come along the baseline. And then up. Okay. Again, tracing along the line. So basically, you're just moving around the chip. Everything works right, should pop out like that. So let's do this one. This is actually a very interesting shape chip. It's again, it's now that you've got a four-sided shape, one, two, three, four. So we're going to make four cuts, starting up at this tip here. Come along, and now this is what makes this one interesting is that, again, you want the center of that chip to be right here. But where's the tip of the knife? The tip of the knife is actually still up there. So you rotate the knife up pivot the knife so now the tip has moved down into the center of that chip of the chip that you want to take out. Take the knife out, get ready for the next cut and you basically work your way around the uh, chip. And there's a four-sided uh, cut. So those are the basic cuts that you'll make in chip carving, the basic types of cuts. Uh, everything is based on holding the knife at 65 degrees. And whether it's a two-sided chip, three-sided chip, four-sided chip, you cut them all the same way. And uh, the pattern is formed by removing those chips. Okay. So, I hope you uh, have enjoyed the, the quick demonstration of chip carving. As we mentioned, uh, Charles mentioned earlier, and I uh, talked a little bit about, you can, you can do very uh, nice geometric designs, uh, freeform designs. Uh, to get started with chip carving, uh, you can uh, draw your patterns, or as I mentioned, I have a kit that's called Stampin' Chip. It's a beginner's guide to chip carving. I've got a little workbook that's, that's in, the, uh, in the packet, along with a set of six rubber stamps that are the basic types of designs that you'll use to get started with chip carving, starting with the three-sided triangles, moving up to putting those triangles next to each other into adjacent tr triangles, and then the various types of rosettes. So the rosette that I showed you here, plus another one, and then even a freeform flower shape. So you can get this at uh, my website at uh, www.jeffswooddesigns.com. Uh, so this can help really help get you started so that you're practicing your cutting, you're practicing your carving, not hindered by having to draw all those shapes uh, all the time. So I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed uh, getting the first view of what chip carving is all about. And I uh, hope you have fun learning how to do chip carving in the future. Thanks.